a KQED HD production. Long ago, in the shadow of these snow-covered mountaintops, a mighty river was born. It tumbled down mountainsides and ran through forests and wetlands. It nourished the arid earth as it flowed through the valley, giving life to a multitude of birds, trees, people, and an abundance of fish. There are historical accounts that the residents near the town of Friant would have a hard time sleeping at night because of the sound of the salmon moving upstream. But in less than a generation, long stretches of this great river ran dry. The riverbeds became parched and barren, and the fish and birds disappeared as the water was siphoned off to quench the thirst of California's booming agribusiness. This is the story of California's San Joaquin River, but the ending has yet to be written. The San Joaquin is 330 miles long, the second longest river in California. At one time, it was famous for salmon. Historically, the San Joaquin River used to have the second largest salmon run in the state. Hundreds of thousands of spring run and fall run Chinook used to return every year. By the early 1900s, the population of the San Joaquin Valley was growing fast and river water was already being diverted for agriculture and hydropower, causing a dramatic decline in the number of salmon. Still, the river flowed continuously from the Sierras to the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. The watershed bustled with commerce. There were riverboat races and family resorts for fishing, swimming, and boating. But it was not to last. The river's era of abundance came to an abrupt end with the construction of Friant Dam north of Fresno in 1942. The decision to build the dam was a calculated choice by politicians and powerful landowners to trade fish for farms. Miles of river were all but drained as water was rerouted to irrigate a million acres of arid land from Merced to Bakersfield. Within a few years, the Chinook salmon ceased to exist in the upper reaches of the San Joaquin River. The thing that's most remarkable to me about them is that in spite of all the changes that have occurred and alteration to their habitat and historical conditions, that they still somehow persist. Chinook are the largest of the salmon species. They travel thousands of miles, spending three to five years in the open ocean before returning to their river origins to spawn. Salmon returning to spawn can get up to 50, 60 pounds. The interesting thing is when they come back up, they may lose 60% of their body weight. They essentially stop eating when they reach the freshwater system and spawn and die. Salmon have an explosive burst of speed and the ability to leap as high as six feet, physical traits essential for the difficult journey upstream. But the dams on the San Joaquin were built too high for the powerful fish to traverse. And Chinook salmon have been barred from 90% of their ancestral spawning grounds for more than 50 years. Today, the dwindling population found in San Francisco Bay's Delta hangs on the edge of extinction. But that could soon be changing. In 2004, after environmental organizations, including the Natural Resources Defense Council and the Bay Institute, sued the Federal Bureau of Reclamation, a federal judge ordered that water be returned to the river. Two years later, the government and the environmental groups, along with the Friant Water Users Authority, representing thousands of farmers, agreed to a historic court settlement to restore the San Joaquin River and reintroduce spring and fall run Chinook salmon. We knew going into this that making all those parties happy would be very challenging to near impossible. After the project got underway, Jason Phillips' job with the Bureau of Reclamation was to manage this delicate balancing act and make sure the commitments of the settlement are implemented. What this should look like is a river system that can handle the flows that are called for in the settlement while it also can support adjacent agriculture. 
can support uh, recreation, it can support habitat and wildlife corridor through all the reaches. This is the most ambitious and unique river restoration project uh, that has been undertaken. Uh, other rivers have been restored and enhanced. In this case, we have a river that quit flowing as a year-round river for about 30 miles. The river began its return in October 2009 as water flows from Friant Dam were gradually increased. Flows up to 4,500 cubic feet per second, up from 500, are planned under the settlement. Scientists believe that will provide enough water to sustain salmon and leave adequate supplies for farms and urban centers. Already, the river is wet from the dam to the delta. Restoring water and restoring the habitat will help bring back our historic salmon runs. But there are a lot of other native fishes that will benefit from restoring the San Joaquin. There will also be a lot of habitat that's created along the banks, and that's going to benefit a lot of migratory birds that fly up and down the Central Valley every year. Since Friant Dam was built and more than 80% of its water diverted, the east side of the San Joaquin Valley has been some of the most productive farmland in the United States. Under the settlement, water will flow down the river year-round all the way from Friant Dam to the Delta. The deal requires farmers to restore 15 to 17 percent of the water they've been taking. Now, many of the area's farmers are nervous. All of us are going to be cut back severely. We just don't know how much yet. I don't know how many guys will be able to go out and actually plant. Four generations of Jim Erickson's family have worked this land in Madera County growing peaches, almonds, and other crops since his grandfather bought the property in 1920. But less water and higher costs mean hard times for many family farmers. Jim tried talking his sons out of staying on the farm. You try to convince them to get out of it because it is an easier way of life somewhere else. But the pride I have having them home, as you can hear, it's, uh, it's great. Water is the lifeblood of the farm, so the Ericsons are looking for ways to do more with less. Originally we were all flood irrigation. We are now putting in micro sprinklers, drip irrigation. We'll spend between $20,000 $25,000 per year for just the water. While growers make changes to compensate for reduced allocations, okay. increased water to the river is already transforming the landscape. 153 miles of river from Friant Dam to the confluence with the Merced River near Turlock are being restored. River habitat will be created, barriers will be removed, and new passageways built. Chinook salmon are to be reintroduced by the end of 2012 and nurtured until they're self-sustaining in the wild. Now this, this is a ripple right here, right? Gerald Hatler is a senior scientist with the California Department of Fish and Game. As the flows increase, his team of researchers and engineers measures the water levels and tracks the speed of the current. They carefully monitor the temperature, which is key to salmon survival. Making sure the San Joaquin water is cold enough will be a considerable challenge, particularly for spring-run salmon. They'll hold over in cooler holding pools until the fall when they spawn. That means that they, they have to be in a system during the summer, and river temperatures in the San Joaquin system typically are not suitable for that. Spawning females lay and hide their eggs in the gravelly river bottom, where the shallow water moves rapidly over the rocks, infusing the river and the row with oxygen. The stretch of river being restored for the salmon is divided into five reaches that pose a range of predicaments. Reach one begins directly below Friant Dam and has always had water year round. But downstream at Gravelly Ford where Reach two begins, the river starts to dry up. For decades, much of the 24 miles of Reach two has been waterless most of the time. Reach 2 terminates right here at the Mendota Pool. 
Most of the area upstream of this pool is a sandy, dry riverbed. Most of the water in the Mendota pool is pumped from the Delta via the Delta Mendota Canal to be delivered to agriculture in the Central Valley. The Mendota Dam is one of the major barriers to salmon, but rather than adapting the structure, scientists decided to avoid the dam and pool altogether. If we were to let the river flow as it currently flows, we would have to make sure that the fish didn't get sucked into the irrigation water. Rod Mead was chosen to be the independent restoration administrator. He and his team of experts advise the government agencies leading the river rescue. The construction of a river bypass will take water in from the river upstream of the pool and cut across and below the pool to rejoin the river farther downstream by 150 yards or so. As many as a dozen areas will require large-scale restoration work. For example, the floodgates on Reach 4 at Sand Slough are big dead ends for fish. This part of the San Joaquin River hasn't had flow in it for quite a number of years. And under the restoration program, these gates will get rebuilt in a way that would make them both serve as the flood control purpose that they currently have, but also so that they're fish friendly, so that juvenile and adult salmon can move through these gates safely. It could be decades before we see if the restoration project achieves its goals. But one thing is certain, the San Joaquin will become a living river again. And the success of this restoration could decide the fate of the Chinook salmon species, whose fabled forebearers were born in the cool riffles of the San Joaquin a century ago. We're gonna be restoring a living river to bring back historic salmon runs, and to do it in a way that reflects the modern world we live in, where water supply now has a lot of different demands for agriculture and for urban uses, as well as for the environment. The San Joaquin River Restoration Program is really a model for water resource issues in California.